I wanted to take some time and explain how the inlay kits work. Uh, I've got a Whiteside brand. There are many brands out there. And I'm going to just show you an example using it to uh, inlay a letter in a piece of wood. And uh, you can go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels or online at Amazon and buy letters. I'm going to show you how I did the letter L in this box. As I said, you can go to uh, the hobby store. This is Hobby Lobby near my house. I'm just showing you some of the varieties. They come in all sizes and uh, different fonts. I also went online at Amazon and just looked under MDF letters. And you can buy 4-inch letters, 6-inch letters, 8-inch letters, 10-inch letters, different font styles. Uh, different thicknesses, quarter inch seems to work best and they're cheaper and all you're using this for is to get your initial shape. This is really going to become a three-step process. You're going to take this thing, whatever it is you want to use as your shape, you're going to use it to create a template and then with the template you create you're going to cut out both the inlay piece and the recess or the hollow in your workpiece that that inlay will fit into. And uh, so step one is using the inlay kit with the smallest bushing and step one is to make the template. So this yellow is going to represent my template material. This blue L is going to represent a letter that I bought at the store to use as my shape and I'm going to run the router around that letter using the smaller bushing and what I'm going to end up with is a template. I'll throw away that center because that's a different size and that's not the part I care about. What I want to save is this yellow part and is now my template. Step two now is to take that template and make the insert. In my case I did this with walnut. I had plane the walnut down to like 3 16 I leave the small bushing on the router you can see so what I'm doing now is reproducing that letter I bought at the store that was MDF I'm reproducing that size now in 3 16 walnut run my router around that throw that piece away and here's my insert now I switch over to step three, which is to hollow out the workpiece where this is going to fit. I take that same template, but now I put the larger bushing on the router. This, in essence, moves the bit over one-eighth of an inch, and you'll see this is further stepped away from the side of the template. I will run that around my workpiece and then zigzag around on that workpiece to hollow out the rest of it at that same level. And this is just going to represent doing that. And once that's hollowed out, uh, you'll be very pleased and very amazed that that cutout you made using the same template with the small bushing fits perfectly into the hollow that you made in the workpiece using the large bushing again. The idea behind these inlay kits in these two size bushings is to basically just move that 1 8 inch spiral cut router bit 1 8 of an inch accurately. So here is the box that I made uh, using the letter L. Uh, it was a hickory box and a black walnut letter did it with this white side inlay kit. Let me show you this one more time because I, I just once I kind of mastered the thought here it became a lot easier to use. So pretend this blue line is the inlay material, the walnut in my case. The green is the template and here is the router bearing and that's holding the right side of the bit 7 32 of an inch away from the template. 
the piece that you cut off becomes your inlay piece. Now you put your work piece down, use the larger bushing, and it pushes the left side of the bit to 730 seconds, and the part that you hollow out becomes the hollow that the inlay goes into. I'll show you it one more way here in an illustration by routing a couple of lines. Here's the router with the small bushing on it. And I'm just running this down the edge of a, of a make-believe template. And there's the 1 8 inch groove that it cut. And again, the right-hand side of that groove is 7 seconds of an inch away from the template. So I would be saving the wood to the right of that groove, and that would become my insert, or in my case, the walnut letter L. Then when I'm doing the hollowing of the workpiece, I put the larger bushing on the router using the same template. And now as I run it down, you can see it's cut to the right side of that pencil line. And that is the line that your insert and your hollowing meet each other. Here I'm trying to just show you a measurement with the bushing from the edge of the bearing is 7 seconds of an inch. And if you pull this bushing off and measure from the bushing to the other side of the router bit, your 7 seconds of an inch as well. The, the larger bushing, the ring that goes on there is exactly one eighth of an inch. Again, the whole point is to move the router bit an eighth of an inch. If you just want to know what the dimensions are, the small bushing is 5 sixteenths. The large bushing is 9 sixteenths. If you take the radius of that instead of the diameter, you're adding 1 8 of an inch. Again, in essence, simply moving the 1 8 inch router bit 1 8 of an inch. And that's giving you the left side, so to speak, to make your insert and the right side, so to speak, to make your cutout. Just showing you one more time here, just the individual pieces. Again, the smaller bushing is 5 sixteenths. The larger bushing is 9 sixteenths. That makes sense because I'm trying to move a 1 8 inch router bit, 1 8 of an inch. Here is the 1 8 inch spiral cut router bit. By the way, the spiral cut is great because it cleans out the, uh, the uh, shavings for you. And uh, it's also, these bushings fit really tightly. They actually provide a little groove, you can see there, on the smaller bushing. And then on the larger bushing, there's actually an O-ring in there, so that when you slide that on, it fits very tightly. It's super accurate. It's moved the bit exactly one-eighth of an inch, so that you get a super tight inlay when you make those two cuts. It also comes with this centering jig, so this holds the, uh, the brass part in your router dead center so that if you happen to kind of rotate your router as you're using it, it will hold that bit in exact dimension from the edge of the bushing, whichever direction you might be moving your router in. Then all these pieces come in just a nice little bag. And again, I think there are other brands, in fact, there are quite a few other brands, but mine happens to be a white side. I've used this a lot. I've made several boxes for grandkids, uh, you putting their initials uh, on the boxes. Uh, I did a letter A for one of my grandkids. Uh, this was a maple box and a walnut letter. Here's a letter S, another maple box. Here's that letter A again. Here's that letter S again. And then uh, I did this final box uh, using a hickory glue up and again a um, walnut letter L. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Thanks again.